السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. إن شاء الله. We thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We have our special guest over here, the Sheikh Muhammad Awal, the CEO of Azhaitul Dawa. إن شاء الله. That is well known. We don't have to introduce him. At least a lot of people you've been hearing him here and there, back and forth. That he has been spreading the word of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And we are so grateful to see him in our presence today to grace this our weekly program Bridging the Gap. So because of that, we are appealing to brothers and sisters of Iman. Inshallah, we're gonna pray at 8 10. Because of the program, we're gonna pray Salat al Isha at 8 10. Jazakumullah khairan. الله السميع العليم من شيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكة المقربين وعلى إباد الله سبحانه رحمة يا رحم الرحيمين الحمد لله رب العالمين we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for this way of life for this Islam had it not been for Allah's guidance you and I would not have been in any position to guide ourselves into this so therefore all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nourisher, the sustainer, the evolver, the molder, the shaper, the capacitated master of creation. And the peace and blessing of Allah be upon the last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household and companions and all those who follow him until the end of time. Uh, really it is, uh, it is a pleasure, it is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I've come back home. Uh, anytime I come to this masjid, I call it home. I've been out for quite a long time, and yeah, sometimes you have to turn around and come back home. So I'm glad I'm part, I'm still part and parcel of this community, and whatever I can do to um, offer, to propel Islam in the world that we live in today. Uh, as you know, we just left, uh, or rather, we still, uh, we have that inkling of Hajj with us today, as we sit here today. And uh, I know, because it is part of my work, uh, we have a lot of people, we call them Orientalists, the Orientalists are people who specialize on condemning Islam. They write books about Islam and they make statements about Islam that is not consistent with what Islam is teaching. They claim to have have information about Islam that we don't even know. They make statements out of the blue from their whimsical you know, thinking and their preformed prejudice about the Messenger of Islam and then the Quran also. They've written so many books. And so I read these books all the time. And they appear on you know, social media. You find them on internet. You find them on you know, uh, WhatsApp. Sometimes they release information. And they have so many TV stations, of internet type of TV station. As you go along, you will find them. Amongst them, we have the Omega. Then we have another group. They call themselves uh, Love, Love, Love Muslims. That's what they say, Love, Love a Muslim Ministry. But these people, um, they hate Islam with a twist. Then we have another group, they call themselves, you know, Arabs for the Muslims. Uh, in fact, they are Christians who specialize on, uh, they are Christian Arabs who specialize on uh, 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 condemning Islam. They are Arabs, they speak very well, Arabic born Arabs, but they are Christian and they specialize. They make it their memorial to condemn Islam on each and every facet they found themselves. And so they were saying that this year, the Hajj that we went this year, in fact, is close to four million. This is something that the world have never seen before. This is mind boggling. The rate at which people are going to Hajj is surging all the time. And um, the Pew Foundation, they, they live in America. They specialize on survey to see what's going on. They are very good at that. In fact, they are the leading survey groups who, when they make any statement, you know, people listen and they work with it. They are saying that, let's suppose the four million people that go to Hajj every year, if they should be coming to the United States, the big old United States, what a great nation. If these four million people come to America every year, they will wreck the economy of America. America cannot sustain itself for the next 15 years if 4 million people 
come to it every year for one month. This is the survey they gave. So to them, it's a miracle that Saudi Arabia is sustaining these people. It is a miracle indeed. But then again, we have another man also who lived in Texas, but now he moved to Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Um, he wrote so many books, and among the books that he wrote is The Bloody Islam. I think I've mentioned this before, I don't know if I did mention this here. Uh, the book that he wrote, he called it The Bloody Islam. It's an insult to Islam, but that's the name of the book. And at the cover of the book, it is a Quran, and then there is a dagger pierced through the Quran, and the blood is coming out of it. So he named it The Bloody Islam. Now in that book, he, he left a page of Hajj. He said, you know, there's, there's a chapter that deals with Hajj. Eleven and a half pages he was speaking about Hajj. This man, who is, so to speak, the, you know, a, a, a worshiper of Christ. And so in that chapter, he said the Muslim expend billions of dollars every year going to that black house, that cage, he said, I'm quoting this word, that cage which housed over 360 gods of the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He said each and every tribe in the Qurayshi tribe, each and every tribe have a god that they worship placed in the Kaaba. But the Hashemite god is the superior of them all. And it belongs to the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So when he came, he overthrew all these gods and he made his gods free condemning the other gods, so therefore his god is Allah. Uh -huh. And so all the other gods condemn. I don't know where they get this information, but this is what this man is saying. He lives in Florida. So what we do is that, okay, fine. Uh, this is a psychological uh, warfare. We live in the world today that we don't need to, um, uh, you know, we shall overcome kind of stuff, throwing stone and, you know, no. This is intellectual error. It's intellectual error. So when he come on air, make statement, we have to go back also to report whatever he says. So what I did in Seattle was that we wrote a letter to him. Is it okay that you come or we come have a talk on the book that you wrote? Because I've seen about five different chapters that is dealing about Islam that does not make any sense. And I think I have the right to question that. So if you can give us an audience, we would like to come to Florida and have a dialogue on that book. Well, Guess what? They didn't show up and they didn't reply to us. And so what we did was that I travel mostly in the north, north, northwestern part of the United States, mostly uh, Las Vegas, Idaho, Oregon, Washington State, Montana, and part of California. So we spent about two months going around and being on air to report each and everything that he said. And among the things that he said is that the highway that we're going, we go there and we bow down to an idol. That's what he said. It's an idol that is in Mecca that we go down and bow down to. And so I said, okay, um, when I went to Hajj this year, Allah made it easy for me to go to Hajj this year. So I took it upon myself to speak a little bit on Hajj. So I called this Hajj prophesied in the ancient scriptures. The rituals of Hajj prophesied in the ancient scriptures. Why not? Allah said, وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُسَدِّكًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمُحَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ We send down the book to you, O Muhammad, in truth, confirming the other books that came before the Qur'an, وَمُحَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ The Qur'an will watch over the books into safety. Meaning, both the Qur'an and the other books came from the same source. That's what the Qur'an is saying. Allah also said, those whom the book was given, O Muhammad, they know you very well and they know Islam like they know their own children. Clearly, the Quran also said, Those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet whom they found mentioned in their books. Torah, well, Injil, mark my word. The Quran said, An Nabi al Ummi, Al Lazi Yajidu Nahu Maktuban, whom they found an unlettered, uneducated prophet mentioned in their books. The Quran said, Torah, well, Injil, meaning 
His name, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is mentioned in Torah and the Injil. Now, how do we balance this equilibrium of saying that Hajj is mentioned in the scriptures? Allah said, "Lakin Allah yashhad bi ma'anzala ilayka, anzalahu bi ilmihi, wa malaikatu yashhadu, wa kafah billah shayda." Oh Muhammad, the information that I've just given you came from my own Allah's fountainhead of knowledge, and the angels bear witness. And Allah said, nee, I am the ultimate witness to see to it that whatever I reveal to you came from my own personal. And so the Muslims and the Christians are having the difficulties. The difficulty is that they say that the son of sacrifice is Isaac. And we say the son of sacrifice is Ishmael. They say it's Isaac. We say it's Ishmael. So how do we solve this problem? This is like, what, about 4,000 years old situation. How are we gonna solve this problem? When each and every different, the groups have been divided, each one is claiming to be on the right. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna enter into the ancient books and see. We're gonna use some quotation, use your God-given bodilessness and mental powers, process the information. Eventually, I believe, we'll come to conclusion as to which son was indeed the sacrifice uh, sacrificial son. Okay, let's back up and go back to um, uh, Jesus Christ. May peace be upon him. And in the book of Matthew 21, 42, Jesus made a statement before he left the earth. He said, Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, see how I'm trying to get closer to you. I'm trying to gather you like a hen does to her own chicken, but she keeps slipping away. Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, the stone that you rejected, O Jerusalem, will be the head corner of the builder's stone. The stone which you, Jerusalem, rejected, that stone will be the head corner of the builder's stone. Now we know Jesus did not say stone because English language does not exist at the time of Jesus. So he didn't say stone. Whatever he said was translated into vernacular. And then the verse continued by saying, the kingdom of God, O Jerusalem, will be taken away from you and it will be given to the other nation and they will bring the fruits thereof. The kingdom of God will, not shall or may, no, 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 no. The kingdom of God will be taken away from you, O Jerusalem, and it will be given to the other nation and they will bring the fruits thereof. This quotation is telling you and I that something is going to be transferred from Jerusalem to some other nation. I want you to bear with me. As I quote, you reason with me. You see, Abraham, he was very old when he got Ishmael, his first son. But our brethren, the Christian, keep saying that Ishmael was an illegitimate son. I know you've heard that a lot. The Bible never mentioned that. The Old Testament never mentioned at no time in anywhere, in any version of the Bible, it never said that Ishmael was an illegitimate son. Absolutely not. It was Paul who came long after the books were written, over 3,000 years, and he began to write Colossians, Ephesians, Thessalonians, and he is the one that said, after all, we are with Sarah because she was the legitimate son, and Ishmael, coming from Hagar, was the illegitimate son. I don't know where he get that from, but the Bible did not say Ishmael come from illegitimate son. We will prove to the contrary. The word Ishmael actually means something great. The word Ishmael in Hebrew language, it means have heard. Who have heard? Isma'a in Arabic, Isma'a in Arabic. In Hebrew, Ishmael means have heard. Heard what? El. Ishmael El. Allah, El, El, El have heard the affliction of Hagar. That name was cut out from the heavens, given to a son on earth. If this man is not legitimate, why would Allah go out of his way, send an angel in the book of Genesis to bring a name to, uh, to, 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 to Hagar? Say, oh Hagar, the Lord have decreed that thou shalt name thy son Ishmael. Ishmael, El, have heard your affliction, your pain. Ishmael means God have heard your problems. So how could this man become illegitimate? 
The Bible didn't say that. It says, and Abraham took Hagar as a wife whom Sarah have allowed him so that God or the Lord might bless us with a son. Because he is with Sarah for many years. No son. So she said, my Lord, take my handmaid, Hagar, and marry her. That was the word used. And marry her, not girlfriend her. And Mar would you believe that Abraham will take a girlfriend? The word used there was marry her and the Lord might find favor upon us and he will give us a son or he will bless us with a son. And so Abraham married Hagar. Now let's back up again. Jesus said, the stone that you rejected. No, no, no. English word does not exist at that time. So he might have said something. What did he say? It's a Hebrew word. Hagar. In Hebrew, the language of Jesus, Hagar and Aramaic. Hagar means stone. In Arabic, Hajar means stone. Hajar al Aswad, the black stone. In Hebrew, Hagar means stone. In Arabic, Hajar means stone. So, the Hajar whom you have rejected, O Jerusalem, upon her will be the builder's cornerstone. That's what it means. Simple. And the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, Jerusalem, and it will be given to another nation, and the nation will bring the fruit. Mark my word, nation fruitful, nation fruitful. Now, let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 17 verse 20, where Abraham prayed to God Almighty to protect his son for him. Abraham was very old, almost 110 years. So he was praying to God Almighty to look after his son for him. Then God revealed the answer. God said in Genesis 17, 20, As for Ishmael, behold, I have blessed him already. As for Ishmael, I have blessed him already. Behold, I will make him a great nation. I will multiply him exceedingly. He will be like the stars in heaven. And he will become fruitful. And there will be kings and queens among his loin because he is your seed. And I will make him a great nation. Look at Akbar. Look at the word used by Jesus. Nation fruitful. The same thing God said, I will make him fruitful. I will make him a great nation. Look at the Palestine. Look at the Arab world today. Which nation? I will make him nation. Which land do the Jewish occupy? Just one. Even that one, we have a stake in that one also. But all the other nation is Ishmael. I will make him a great nation. I will multiply him exceedingly. There will be kings and queens among his loin. Because he's your seed, I will make him fruitful. And I will make him a great nation. Indeed, Allah have followed to the letter this promise that Abraham is fruitful through Ishmael. Hence, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam came from the root of, you know, Ishmael. Okay, putting that aside, now, which son was sacrificed? Is it Isaac or Ishmael? To find the answer, clearly, we have to go again to the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verse 1 to verse 4. Genesis 22, verse 1 to verse 4. It reads, listen to the English used there to see who was the son of sacrifice. It says, God Almighty speaking, he said, O oh Abraham, arise and take your son, your only son, Isaac, and go to the Mount of Moriah and sacrifice him there. I don't know if it's Moriah, Moriah, that's what the Bible said. I'm going to quote the word again. That's, the answer is in the quotation, which I have to look carefully. Take your son, O oh Abraham, your only son, Isaac, and go to the Mount of Moriah and sacrifice him there. No, that's a wrong concept. Take your son, Isaac, your only son, Isaac? No. Isaac has never been the only son of Ibrahim alayhi salam. It was Ishmael who was the only son for 14 years. Ishmael is older than Isaac 14 years. So how can God say, take your son, your only son, Isaac? As if God don't speak good English. It should be take your son, Ishmael, your only son. Because Ishmael was the one that is the only son for 14 years. 
For 14 years, he was the only son. So he's take your son, your only son, Ishmael, and go to the Mount of Moria and sacrifice him there. But no, they delete it. They remove it. They took it away. That's, that's their tradition. They've been doing that a lot. I know, because this is my film. Like I said all the time, I don't even know how many Bibles do I have in the house. Just so many Bibles. I have a lot of Bibles. A whole lot. And I keep buying some more. I keep ordering for some more. Because very ingenious. They keep changing their words. Because if you lie, you have to keep on lying to cover your trace. That's just common sense. You lie. You can't change. Come back and say, look, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. You have to keep on lying to, to, to cover your track. And that's what is happening. So we have revision, revised standard. We have different, different, different. It keeps coming all the time. And the books, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 8, verse 8. Jeremiah is one of the strongest prophets in Ben Israel. One of the biggest prophets. <clears throat> he said, Do you think that we have the law of Moses and the other prophets with us still? No. The pen of those who write the books have turned it into a lie. The Bible said I didn't say that. So I keep telling them, they say, oh, Mr. Muhammad, you are, you are, you know, you insulting us. I said, I'm not, I'm not quoting your books. Your Bible said, Jeremiah said, Jeremiah 8.8. 8. The other Bible said, think not that we have the law of Moses and the other prophet with us. Behold, the lying pen of the scribe have turned it in vain. I didn't say that. The book said that. And the Quran confirmed. For we lulli lazina yaktubuna li kitaba bi aidihim thumma yakuluna khaza min indi Allah. Li yashtaru bihi thamanan qalilan. For we lulli lakum mimma katabat aidihim. For we lulli lakum mimma yaktubun. Woe unto those who write the books with their own hand. And then they say, it's from Allah. So that they will sell it and make some money out of it. Woe to the hand that write it. Woe to the benefit they make out of it. So even their books is confirming that the books that they have is being changed. It's changing. So, there is no wonder if they have removed the name of Ishmael and replaced it with the name of Isaac. This is their tradition. They keep doing that all the time. And Jesus rebuked them for that. Where? In the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 15. Jesus said, these people, they worship me with their lips only. Their heart is far away from me. In vain do they worship me. Teaching the doctrine written by men. Men wrote the books. I'm not concocting it. This is the book, Matthew 8, 15. Even Jesus condemned them because they are changing the books. So if they can change the books according to Jesus and other prophets, then they can easily remove the name of Ishmael and insert the name of Isaac easily. But Allah makes sure that they left that word only. Take your son, your only son. <laughs> no, that's where we found out that, man, they're playing games. Allah will that they will leave the word only. Because if you say only son, that means you don't have any other son. Before and after, you have no any other son. This is your only son. And that only will apply to Ishmael for 14 years. It was later that Isaac was born. So clearly, they have changed the book. And so we tell them, look, this is it. That hajj that we do is in your book. So now, where is the hajj mentioned in the scriptures? If we look in the book of Psalms of David, the so-called, you know, um, uh, um, what's the book of Moses again? I mean, uh, David, the Zabur, right? The so-called Zabur, but I'm not sure if it's the quote-unquote Zabur. But to reason with them, fine. You said uh, uh, David wrote it. We said, you look into the Psalms of David, supposed to be for David. I don't know who wrote the book of David up to now. Clearly, if you read the books, you know it's not David, you know it's not Solomon. Many writers say unknown. Many, 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 most writers, among them is Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman, one of the authority on the New Testament, who wrote the mis uh, misquoting Jesus and the interrupted Jesus. He wrote these books, misquoting Jesus and the interrupted Jesus. He himself, clearly, if you read the book, you know, no, he didn't write the book. But in the book of Psalms, chapter 84, verse 6, Psalms 84, verse 6, listen to what it says about Hajj. It says, Blessed is the man in whose heart is yearning for the pilgrimage. He who went to the valley of Becca 
and he drank the water that came from the springs. <laughs> what is this? Clearly, I don't need no interpretation on this one. But we know. God did not say, blessed is the man in whose heart is yearning for the pilgrimage. Because again, there was no English. But if you look at the ancient books, the, uh, the, 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 um, the Mishnah and Talmud, these are the commentary books for the five books of Moses. If you look in these books, clearly it's written in the Hebrew language. And the word pilgrimage, the word pilgrimage in Hebrew and Arabic is haggi. Haggi is pilgrimage. In Arabic is haggi. Pilgrimage. So, blessed is the man in whose heart is yearning to go for haggi. In Arabic, haggi. He who went to the valley of Becca and he drank the water that came from the springs. Which water from the springs? Zamzam. Zamzam is the only water in the middle of the desert that has no outlets. It's a spring. It's an enigma to the scientists. How could this water exist without any source? Most water, river, or stream have source. But this have no, there's no source. It's just sitting in the middle of the desert. It keeps coming for millennium. Love Akbar. This is what the Bible said. And he drink the water that came from the springs. Where? In Becca, in the valley of Becca. If you go to Hajj, you see that Mecca is a valley. It's rock, stone, around a mountain. The city is inside. That is called valley. Valley is mountain surrounding, and then the city inside is valley. The same thing in Medina. All the Mecca Arabian area is a valley. It's a mountain surrounded by the city. So the Bible said, he who went to the valley of Becca, Incidentally, the Quran mentioned Becca once, and the Bible also mentioned Becca once. In the awwal bayt, with the alinas, the lazi bakata. The first house established to worship one God is the one in Becca, ancient name for Mecca. So the, Quran, the Bible said he went to the valley of Becca. No wonder Allah said, "Al lazina atina hum al kitab ya arfuna hu kama ya arfuna abuna ahum." Those whom the book were given, the Kitab, they know you and they know Islam very well, like they know their own children. They know. But the pain, the house, that the last messenger is coming from the Arabs, these Arabs, these camel herders, these goat herders, uncultured, uneducated, who walk barefooted in the desert, these Arabs whom we look down upon them, the last messenger is coming from them? No. That's the only thing. Otherwise, why would they leave, you know, uh, 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 Canaan and come to Medina? Because if you look at the Bible, it tells you that the last messenger is coming to Medina. Yes! It's there in their books. You look at the book of uh, Isaiah, to, uh, to the 21 verse 13. Isaiah 21 verse 13, it reads, it reads, the burden is upon Arabia. What is burden? It's a responsibility. That's what the Bible said. The burden is upon Arabia. Oh, you who live in the thickest depth of the Arabian desert. Oh, you who was kicked out of his own house. Oh, you who ran away because of bow and arrow and sword. Oh, you who went to the land of Tima and was given a water and bread and the Lord have promised within a year or two those your adversary who are trying to kill you you will eventually absorb them as I'm reading I know you are thinking about the story of Muhammad as he left Mecca to Medina in fact he lived in the thickest depth of the Arabian desert with sword and bow they're trying to kill him he escaped to Tima Tima was the third son of Ishmael alayhi salam Ismail his third son is called Tima. He was the one that formed the Medina, the ancient name of Medina. <coughs> then it became Yetere. Then it became a little Munawara. You know how countries, nations change with names. So he went to the land of Tima and he was given water and bread. That was the first thing they gave Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he came to Medina. He gave him water. Water is precious. The Lord said, within a year or two, those who are trying to destroy you, you will absorb them. And believe me, within a year or two, the first war between 
the Muslims and the non-Muslims was their burden. Exactly how the Bible proclaimed within a year or two. And most of those who were trying to destroy Islam were in fact absorbed into Islam. Among them is Khalid bin Walid. Clearly. That's why Allah said, Allazi yajidu nahu matuban in the conflict Torah or Injil. He is mentioned in Torah and the Injil is there. Even though they have changed it, but still we have remnant of truth in there. So how do we confirm the Hajj in their books? This is it. The second part of that is that can be found in again the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2, it read again. It says, Towards the end of time, there will be a house of the Lord built on top of the mountain in the desert. Towards the end of time, there will be the house of the Lord will be built on top of the mountain. And this house of the Lord will be greater and famous than any other house of worship on the face of the earth. And nations all over will flow into it to worship the Lord. The word used there, nations all over the world will flow towards this house of worship to worship the Lord. Now if you have the picture of uh, Kaaba, don't you see people flowing like water that you pour water, you see people flowing like a mirage of water, people flowing. The picture of uh, going to Mina, you see people flowing, they flow as if water is being split. I'm going to quote it again. Towards the end of time, before the end of the world, the Lord has said, there will be the house of the Lord built on top of the mountain. And this house will be more famous than each and every house of worship on the face of the earth. And nations all over the world will flow towards it to worship in that house. The only house of worship that you can have in your mind is the one in Kaaba. You, there's, no, there's no going around it. You can't dodge it. And then again, we read again in the book of Isaiah. Today I'm using Isaiah a lot. Because Isaiah contains so many prophecies that, 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 that speaks about the Hajj. So Isaiah 19.19 19 also said, God Almighty again speaking to Isaiah. He said, Oh Isaiah, before the end of the time, there will be a temple built in a town near Egypt. But at the corner of that temple will be a black stone. And the people will pray to God Almighty to send them a savior. And he will send them a savior. And that temple will be a witness to mankind. I am the Lord. Beside me there is no one to be worshipped again. So now you ask any pastor, any reverend, what is this verse about? He said, well, it's talking about um, the end time, you know, when, uh, when, when, when the Lord comes, uh, there's going to be a new Jerusalem. And they'll give you all these flowery words. But the quotation, I mean, the prophecy is so clear. There will be a temple built in a town near Egypt. Which town near, you compare Egypt and Jerusalem and Egypt and Saudi Arabia, which is, which is near? Saudi Arabia is near. There will be a temple built in a town near Egypt. It's near Egypt. And at the corner of that temple will be a black stone. Guess what? They've taken that black stone away. Now the new Bible at the corner of that temple will be a pillar. And okay, fine, we'll take it still. Pillar, whatever. As long as there is something at the corner of that temple, it's still a pillar, it's still a black stone. Very ingenious, man. They keep writing the books. I don't know if I've mentioned that. Some years ago, I was speaking here and I've mentioned that in the year 2051, there's going to be a new Bible. It's coming. It's supposed to have come last year, but they've stampeded those who have vested interest. The new Bible, you know, if you drive in the yellow cave, you go across uh, Brooklyn Bridge. See the tower house? See, they're building that. That's where they started building that new Bible. Where it says, He, referring to God Almighty, now they're making He stroke she. Because of the women, right? Why should God be He? How about the women? So anywhere in that new Bible, where they say he, referring to God, now it's going to be he, stroke she. We have to make room for the women also. You see how things work? See how they change their book? They change it so much that King, no, the revised standard version of 1973, make, make, speak even loud. 
if you have the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, written in Addis of the Three, if you look at the preface, the third paragraph, it reads, the King James Version of the Bible has so many grave defects. What is defect? Defect is accident. You know, like, you're coming from the east, I'm coming from the west, we crush defects. The King James Version of the Bible has so many grave defects, and these defects are so many and so serious as to call for a revision. So we have to revise the book. Why would you revise the book of Allah? Do you know more than Allah that you have to revise his book? So the Quran said, أَفَلَا تَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ إِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَا يُدُوا فِي إِتِلَافَ قَصِيرًا don't you look at the Quran with care? Had it been someone wrote the Quran, there would have been so much inconsistency in the Quran. You can't write the Quran. You can't do anything with it. It is a standing miracle. You can change it. It is our tradition. We have young children, five and up. They memorize the Quran from cover to cover. So you can change it. You can rewrite it. You can, you know, plagiarize anything. You can't do anything with it. That's the Quran. It is the power of sustainability. Allah has protected this book of Allah. It's protected. That is the only book that has been protected. So why is Uzair being worshipped? Yes, some, some sects within Judaism. Judaism, the Jewish, they have over 51 different sects. Over 51 different sects. Some sects do worship Uzair. Some sects worship Uzair. Who's Uzair? Uzair in the Hebrews, Ezra. Ezra. Why did they worship him? Because when they were taken into captivity in, in Babylon, uh, Nebuchadnezzar actually destroyed all their artifacts, destroyed all their books, destroyed all whatever they have. So they have no books. So when they were allowed to go back to um, Jerusalem, they don't have any book that they could depend upon because their books have been destroyed. They, put everything to ashes. So Ezra, he was a scribe. Scribes are those who write the ancient scrolls. So he was able to bring most of the Torah from his own memory. So the people were like, SubhanAllah, how did you do that? It's got to be a God walking on earth. So some faction among them do worship him still. They still are around. Few of them live in Hebron. Some faction of the Jewish they have taken him as Allah. But they didn't call him Allah because of majority of the Jewish don't take somebody to be Allah. Some factions still call him Allah. The Quran is right by saying some have taken him after my research when I read that part of the sect that take Uzair, which is in Arabic, Isra, to be Allah, I have to make sujood as shukur to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that make me a Muslim. How could Muhammad have known this hidden secret far from Mecca and look at where they are? How could he have known that? It's impossible. And so when we say Islam is the continuation of the earlier books, we are right. We are not saying that the Quran is the only book. No. The Torah is a book, but where is the Torah? We believe in the Torah in its spiritual form given to Moses. We believe that. But we don't have it here with us. But we believe that Moses came with a Torah. What we have is a dilute form of Torah. Because if you open Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, what you read is that, and the Lord said unto Moses, go to the land of Piram. And Moses went to the land of Piram. And the Lord spoke to him. And the Lord said to Moses, count. Somebody else was writing. It's the third person writing. And Moses was 140 years old. And no one knew his sepulcher. And the Lord buried him. Who was writing this thing? Somebody else was writing what happened between Moses and, and God Almighty. So these books have been changed according to their own people that has been changed. So therefore we believe in the spiritual aspect of that which was given to Moses. The angel Jesus, of course we believe in that angel also, but it is not here. You ask any Christian, where is the gospel of Jesus? You hear, well, um, but, um, well, yeah, you, this, well, it's not there. What we have is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And these guys are not inspired. So if, according to, um, uh, Maurice Bukai, he said the only prophet that if he comes back, he will be happy with his own people is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he gave a scenario because if Moses, let's say Moses come today, 
and he went to Israel. So, okay, Yahoo, where's my Torah? Well, um, I don't know, man. We ask, ask him. Moses, where's, where's my Torah? It's not there. They don't have the Torah. The Torah is not there. What they have is according to, according to, according to. So Moses is going to be angry. He's going to ask them, all right, you've loved the Torah. Where's my staff? The one that I hit the water for it to break. I don't know, man. I think we put it over here, but somebody took it. See, they didn't say, got it. Moses is going to be angry. He's going to ask them. So how many people are in my religion? I mean, so far we have about uh, 15 to 20 million Jews all over. So for the past 3,000 years, only 60 million? You don't do dawah? Oh, you call yourself the chosen people that say, man, please, Moses is going to be very angry at them. You put Moses aside. Now come Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him. He said, all right, Christians, where's my Injil? And well, uh, what we have is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Who are these guys? Where's my Injil, the one that was revealed to me by Allah? Where is it? Uh, you see someone scratching their head. They can't cut, it's not here. What we hear is, and Jesus went there, and then this and that. that is something somebody's telling the story. So he's going to be very angry. It's okay, fine. Um, uh, the, uh, who is me? Well, uh, you, uh, you used to be a teacher, you became a rabbi, and uh, somehow you became a lord, and then you end up being a son of God. Now we kind of worship you as a God. He's going to be angry. He's going to be angry. Now enter Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He goes to Mecca and Medina. All right, guys. Where's the key? Where's my Quran? All right, yes, sir. Quran. Let me check it out. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. All right. Man, that's good. You didn't change anything? No, man. He's going to be happy. Okay, Um, the Salat. You make five or six Salat. No, man, it's just five. Really? Five? Okay, let me see. You check around. It's five. Okay, how about the Hajj? Did you change the time of Hajj? No, we didn't. How about the time of uh, Eid? No, we didn't. Who is me? I'm the messenger of Allah, the servant of Allah. I'm not the son of God. MashaAllah. Okay, let me go around and see. He go to India. He see people worshiping with their clothes wrapped up like this and they put a turban on. He said, MashaAllah, Allah, Allahu Akbar. And he go to Africa. See people with their clothes, you know, like they tie up and they need to salah. They also doing salah. MashaAllah. He go to Indonesia. He go to ah, he go everywhere. People are doing salah. He come to Europe. He see them with their tie like this one. They can just, MashaAllah. He is the only prophet that will be so, so, so happy if he come back. Because none of the five pillars have been changed. None has been changed. So historians said, Muhammad is the most successful of all the other prophets. The most successful, they say. He said, he is the most successful of all the prophets. So this hack that we do, hello, and I was telling them, we're not making it up. It is in the ancient books. How do we bottle that? Okay, let's go to the last book of the Bible. The, the very last book of the Bible. Who knows that? Which book is the last book of the Bible? Huh? Okay, the book of Revelation. Why is it called the book of Revelation? Because John, the Apocalypse, John or Johanna, he had a dream. And in that dream, God Almighty revealed unto him things that are supposed to come before the end of time. And so John, in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 9 to verse 12, John said, And I beheld, and the Lord revealed unto me, and I saw men and women and children and kindred speaking different languages with different colors from different nations but all of them were wearing white robe and the lamb of sacrifice is in their midst and some were bowing down some were prostrating and some were saying salvation unto thee O lord blessed art thou O lord and the angel said john where do they came from and john said they came from different part of the world seeking god almighty's pleasure protection and salvation and the lord said they will not leave the sanctuary until i have given them what they come looking for didn't that just paint the picture of Hajj? <laughs> Which nation all over the world speaking different language, different colors, from different nations, wearing white robe with the lamb of sacrifice? SubhanAllah. Which religion does that? If not Islam. This is the confirmation. So sometimes you begin to wonder, how come they don't see? They tell me. 
Say Muhammad Awa. Some say, but, but how come the Christian they don't see? I say some mumboko mo omo yo fa kumda arjo on. And also hidaya come from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He guides. People live at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have people who live, they see him, they argue with him, they refuse to accept him, right? So Hidayah actually comes from Allah. A friend of mine was saying, man, I wish I lived at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina. I said, don't wish that, man. There are many, thousands, they live at a time, but they became kufr. They didn't accept it. Maybe if you were living at that time, you might be a kafir. So now you are a Muslim, this is the time. Allah never make mistake. Whatever He do is, is, is set up. Allah is like computerized. Everything is computerized. So you are Muslim now, glorify Allah. You are Muslim now, you've never seen Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you've never seen the revelation, you've never seen anything. But yet you believe more than someone that lived 1439 years old. Aren't you going to be happy? Of course you should be. So you should be. So you see, this revelation is talking about the Hajj also from different part of the world. That is exactly what Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, that's what he did. After he built the Kaaba, him and his son Ishmael, this is what happened. When he built the Kaaba, at that time, the Kaaba is like in the deepest ravine of the Arabian desert. It's like, you know, some, if they, you know, it's like perishing. They put you there, you die. No human being, nobody. In the depth of the desert, Allah chose that for Ibrahim Salam. He went with the sun. So after they built that four cubicle house, the Kaaba, Allah said to Ibrahim Salam, why don't you stand on the right part of the Makam Ibrahim, your station, why don't you stand over there and make Adhan and call mankind to come and worship here? You know, Ibrahim said, oh my Lord, there's nobody here. It's just me and Ishmael. I'm going to make azan. Who's going to listen? Ya Allah. Allah said, Ibrahim, I told you, just make azan. Make azan. He said, but Allah, there's no, it's nobody here. It's just me and Ishmael here. Maybe a few animals in the desert, in the wild. Then Allah revealed unto him, Wa azil fin nasi bil hajj, ya atuka rijal, wa ala kulli damirin, ya atuna min kulli fajjin amik. Proclaim, O Ibrahim, to mankind. Proclaim the Hajj to mankind. They will come from distant part of the world. They will come on lean camels, mode of transportation. They will come. This is 4,000 years prophecy fulfilled the time of Muhammad. You go to Hajj, you'll be shocked. Look at these people who forced them to come out of their houses. Who could do that if not Allah? Sometimes you look at so subhanAllah, who forced them to come from their dwellings all over the world? Who forced them with their wealth and their health at stake to come to the temple that Allah has said they will come from distant part of the world, they will come on lean canals, they will come. And they are coming. This is the truth. This is the truth. Islam is the truth. So when I released that video, some of you have seen that video, like nine minute segment that I did on Arafah, when we went to Arafah. So I released that video. Within a few hours after we finished the Hajj, I was in my hotel. Because when I did that, I just sent it on my Facebook wall. I forget about about four or five days after we finished with the Hajj rituals and everything, I was just lying down. So man, I turned my, uh, my video, my, uh, you know, system on. And I looked like, what? Within four days, this thing is going to like a, a one point something million. Like, wow. So I look around, it's like, okay. I show it to my, I said, look, this is what? Five days already. So when I came back to Nigeria, I received a phone call from Pakistan, University, Islamic University. Assalamu alaikum Muhammad Awad, Assalamu alaikum Muhammad Awad, Assalamu alaikum uh, Muhammad Awad, Mashallah, uh, we see your video, blah blah blah, okay, um, can you come and, can you come and uh, present the paper on the same thing, can you present the paper, I said of course I could, okay, you're going to make it like, uh, can you make it like one hour, because it's like nine minutes, can you expand it to make it one hour, I said yes I can do that, I can expand it, okay, but we want you to make it like a paper form, so you present a paper in that institution, I said of course I will do that, so I have a date with them, Inshallah, I'm going to go into, um, 
Pakistan to present paper on this same topic, but I'm going to embellish more and put it in uh, with more evidence that I could use that again. And then again, what happened again? Trinidad and Tobago. Because they always come to this school. Trinidad said, I have to go to West Indies University next month. Again, they want me to speak on the same topic. And then another topic came. I have to go to Kenya to, in Mombasa to speak on. So now, so far, about six countries want me to come and uh, present uh, a paper on the same topic. So you see how the truth cuts. Truth is truth. I didn't know when I was doing that because I was just lying in the tent in Arafa. I was just lying down in my tent and like, you know what? Hey, I, can I let's go hatch in the Bible? It just came. Hatch in the Bible. Man, I took my gear, I went upstairs, and then I started recording this thing. I never know it's gonna read this far. This is the truth. Truth is painful. Truth hurts. And that's exactly what we have. Islam is going through changes. That is how it should be. Allah has willed it this way. The Muslim Sallallahu said, Islam started out very strange. And it will end very strange. Even though it is the most advanced religion on the face of the earth. Wallahi, our masjid in Seattle, Washington. We call it Hope Masjid. We bought that masjid. 3 million 200,000. It's a huge masjid. Huge. It's like four or five in one. You got school in it. You got hospital in it. You got baby care in it. You got basketball court in it. You got so many things. And then the, it's a church. So we bought it. Why did we buy it? Because the parishes are not coming to the church no more. People are just tired. People are thinking, man, so God, you mean God, God was born? This God that we worship, you have a mother? My goodness, so he came just like you and I. Man, that don't, that, that, that don't click. Okay, God, so God have, God have a race. God is a Jew. It doesn't make sense. Okay, God is a carpenter. Man, of all the profession, he didn't even become a Microsoft or something. You know, exotic profession. God, uh, with all due respect, Carpenters, if you are here, I'm not, I'm not, you know, scolding. I'm just saying, God could have chosen to, you know, make seats and chair and bed, but this is how they portray. So people think in the rational life. So Allah said, "In huwa illa zikrun lil alamin wa la taalamunna naba ahu barhi." This Quran is for the whole of mankind. But as time goes on, they will come to understand the implication of the Quranic truth. سَنُرِيْهِمْ آيَاتُنَا فِي الْأَفَاكِ وَفِي أَنفُسِكِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِي أَنَّهُ بِلَا آلَاكُمْ شَيْهِمْ شَيْهِمْ We shall show them our sign from the deepest region of the horizon and within themselves until it becomes clear unto them that this is the truth and this is the truth My Lord of Islam, I have so much to give This is the part one of the topic Hajj in the scriptures I'm going to leave it at here Hopefully, some other time, I will do the part two of this same series. I know you have questions you might want to ask me. So I'm going to stop here, inshallah. Yeah, I'm going to expose myself for you. You could ask me any question that you want to ask me. Hazar billahi tawfiq. Wa ahud da'awani alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Well, you spoke about the conspiracy against Islam uh, coming from the, the uh, Orientalists and also the Christians of today. Uh, is it all based on the fact that they hate the Arabs so much that they try to uh, spin it that way? Is it a fact? I mean, I know this is one of the reasons that is put forth for that it is because of the Jewish hatred for the, for the Arabs that they, they try to sabotage Islam. Could you, could you expand on that? Yes, um, that's why from the beginning I um, 
uh, quoted uh, Jesus saying the book of Matthew chapter uh, 21 verse 42 where you said the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and will be given to um, the other nation and they will bring the fruit thereof and Jesus called them by saying oh Jerusalem oh Jerusalem see how I'm trying to get you close to me but you keep slipping away you who killed the prophet oh Jerusalem the damnation upon you and he went and on and on and, and he said he said the kingdom of God will be taken away from you he said for you oh Jerusalem to uh, you are you are very far away from the Lord you are very far away from the Lord because what you do Jerusalem is uh, the Pharisee and the Sadducee they look like they are godly people but they sit on the side of the street and they look so disheveled. if somebody asks them what do you do is oh I'm fasting so that they want the world to see that they are fasting oh Jerusalem thou who are an adult uh, thou man it's, it's, it's not sweet what the prophet have said about Jerusalem so many things that they've done and so towards the end Allah uh, uh, Allah alienated them and he you know the kingdom of God that Christ if you look at the book of Matthew which is the 6 verse 9 there's this uh, prayers by Jesus Christ O our father who art in heaven look at the English O our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thine kingdom come thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven something is being done in heaven that Jesus want it to be on earth what is that the will of God thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven what is Islam? Islam is total submission to the will of God. So the will of God is Islam. But in the heaven, it was the angels in the book of uh, 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 Revelation who were going around the throne of God Almighty, worshiping Him, bowing down in their throne. So Christ is hoping that this will will come, the kingdom of God will come to earth. And before He left the earth, He said, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, will be given to the other nation. See, it is the pain they're looking down upon the Arabs for many years. No any serious prophet came from the Arabs until Muhammad came. And Muhammad is unlettered, uneducated, which is also mentioned in their books. They know all this thing, but the pain and the jealousy, the, you know, it's just too much. It's overwhelming to them. So you look at the book of Isaiah, for example, 29 verse 12, it reads, And the book was given to him who is not learned, and they asked him to read and he said I cannot read who is this <laughs> you know who is this right okay we know it's Muhammad and the book the kitab was given unto him to read who is not lettered and he said I cannot read and the verse continued we will give him the book but here a little there a little line upon line but he will speak with a different language meaning he will not speak Hebrew but a different language which is Arabic language and that is exactly how the Quran came giving the book here a little there a little watch how the Quran came the first revelation Quran 96 Surah Al-Alaqa that surah contained 19 verses but Allah gave the first five verses from Ikra up to Malam Yalam five remaining 14 Second time the angel came, he should continue. But no, Quran 74. He gave 11 verses. Why? Yeah, a little, a little. The third time the angel came, he didn't continue 74. Quran 67, he gave 21 verses. So the Quran was given here a little, there a little. Line upon line. And the Bible said, we will give him the book, but here a little, there a little. Here a little, there a little. Line upon line. That's what Muhammad Sallallahu did. After he read for him, once the Wahi come, he said, read for me, they read, he made corrections. Okay, put this on the, this line, on this surah. Line upon line. This is exactly what this is. That's what Allah said. Those whom the book was given, they know you very well. Like they know their own children. But the pain, the house, that wow, we have Moses, we have uh, Isaiah, we have Isaac, we have Jacob, we have uh, 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 what's the name again? Joseph, uh, and then the last prophet. We hoping that will come from us, from this Arab. No, it's the pain, the jealousy. There are so many verses that God said, "I will move you, Jerusalem, into jealousy to a stupid nation. I will move your heart, O Jerusalem." I will make you to be a jealous from a stupid nation that you call. Who are they called a stupid nation? The Arabs. 
So Allah says, you make you move them to be jealous. <laughs> Just so many things. You know, inshallah. Okay, brother. Well, oh, I stand to lie, okay. I thought what you all that got here to Islam. I mean, we all this, I mean, we the listeners, we also, I mean, I share. Sure. My question is, um, to your submission, um, the Hassan that's in the company that we, we will do this. Is it the number of Hassan that we need to or um, the Quran says something وَلَكَدْ بَعَسْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا عَنْ إِبُدُ اللَّهِ وَتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ وَإِنْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا خَلَافِ هَا نَزَيْهِ To each and every community, uh, there is a warner that passed through them. At the time of these prophets, they don't fast, they don't go to Hajj, they don't do Nafla. All you have to do, لا إله إلا الله نوح رسول الله. Finish. La ilaha illallah, Ibrahim Rasulullah. Finish! So that was the infancy of Islam. So it has been built. But Abraham might have, have a way, not exactly that the one we have, a way of inviting them into coming to worship. But I have not read any book that said it's the same as the azan that we have today. But they might have their own way of inviting people into the way of Allah. Inshallah. That's next thing. Yes, brother. And the last part, John had a dream concerning the whole uh, yes. uh, What was that chapter again? Okay, this is a uh, revelation, the last book. Yes. Chapter 7. 7? Chapter 7, verse 9, all the way to verse 12. Oh, chapter. So it's like four verses that speaks to all this. Thing. Chapter 7, verse 9 to verse 12. That's where you get out. Uh, okay, he, uh, he raises his hand. Next you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, same thing. Inshallah. Oh, we have we have more time. Fifteen more. Yeah, fifteen more minutes. All right. So we'll take a few questions and see if there's any questions. Inshallah. Or any contributions. Say you have a plan to write the short booklet to us. We can we can give it to the people who are Christian. They can know all the individual topics. Absolutely. So it's like. Yeah. Uh, Hajj in the in the in the, in the scripture, in the scripture uh, you know, Christian scripture mm. or, or you know Asian scripture, whatever yeah. you can give a small booklet. Yeah, you can make it so we can be published. Absolutely. Then we can lend the people. That is very true. And especially when you caught the especially from the Bible, what exactly the place they talk about. Yes. And you just explain. Absolutely. You don't need to. Yeah. In fact, somebody somebody mentioned the same thing to me. Uh, in uh, I think it's about time that I do that. And, and inshallah, this will be helpful for the dawah. It will help a lot because sometimes you make the uh, you give a speech and you go and it is not preserved, and so it becomes you know uh, and also, backlash. And so a lot of time people they don't want to look a lot of time. They yeah. just want short something. Just short. And they can. Confirm the heart and say yes, this is the truth. Allah, Allah. Especially now, people yes. can, you know, we are the yes. world is fast. Russian they want something fast. If you have a big book, you don't have time. So, a small booklet, somebody, I was told this many, many, many times, but I think it's about time that I do that. I'm going to have time, inshallah, before I leave. I'm going to write, uh, I'm going to summarize Hajj in the scriptures, and I'm going to give uh, uh, the quotation and then explain things a little bit so that yeah, we could print it out and give it out. Because most people have become, you know, uh, from, 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 from the time of Hajj, which is last month, up to today, I've given about, I don't know, maybe about 150, 140 Shahada online. I don't even know, I've never seen them. Based on certain things that they read and they hear, or the speak that I've given somewhere. So people call me, are you one of MashaAllah, ah, shit. So they have few questions, uh, can I make a Shahada now? I say, sure. So you make Shahada, I give Shahada in Kenya, Liberia, I don't even see them. So I give the shahada. Once I'm done, I say, okay, go to the nearest masjid. And if you don't know, I will Google it right quick. So okay, go to this masjid right away. It's on this street, you are here, you're going, you know, so you have somebody who will witness it. So, you know, uh, all this because of this pamphlet and that we give them. Wallahi, this small pamphlet, it goes very far. So I'm going to do it, inshallah, and I promise to do that before I leave this time. So we could print it out and uh, maybe uh, supply it to everyone. Inshallah, so Hajj is also mentioned in the Torah, right? Hajj. Yes. Yeah. In the in the book of Torah. The Torah. 
the, the Torah, the, 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 the Torah is, is, is what they call Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. They call that the Torah, or the law, or the Tanakh. They have three names for it. It's, it's also mentioned in it. But when we say Torah, the Old Testament, we have the Old and the New Testament. From Genesis to, um, I think, Malachi. So it's finished. And then we have from Matthew to um, Revelation, the New Testament. Both sides. They all have hygiene inside. All of them. Sir, so, so, is there any Bible quotation that supports this ayah, Wama Kataluhu, Wama Salabu, Wala Kin Shubbi Alabu? No. وما قتلوه ولا وما سلبوه ولكن شبه له وإن الذي نختلف فيه لفي شكل منه ما لهم به من علم of course there is one ayah because that same ayah where we say Allah said we be kufur him let's begin from there we be kufur for calling him Allah Maryam Bhutan al Azim because of their unbelief they said to Mary horrible thing but that horrible thing the Quran didn't tell us but if we look at their books Talmud Mishnah Hagadash in that books they call Mary a hairdresser because hairdressing in the tradition of the Hebrew is a horrible trait. They call Jesus Christ or Isabel Maryama Ben Pendera. Ben is the son. Pendera was a Roman soldier. They say Mary went and had a relationship with a Roman soldier. So they had Jesus, Ben Pendera. That's what they call him. And they call her that one uh, is out the P. You know, that horrible tree. That's that with the P. They call her many times in there. The Quran didn't mention that. So the Quran, Allah gave us an idea of what they say. What be kufuri him, what kawdi him, ala Maryama, buhtan al azim. And they say, wa ma kataluhu, wa ma salabuhu. Wait a minute. This is too dead here. Wa ma kataluhu, he will die. Wa ma salabuhu, he will still die. Why did they mention two? Because if they cut you, you will die. Salah, you still gonna die. So why would they mention The Romans, what they do is they put you on the stake. They are the one that put you on the salib. So the Romans, Allah is saying, the Romans didn't kill him. And the Jewish didn't stone him to death. They didn't kill him either. They didn't kill him. But what happened? It looks like that's what happened. It looks like that's what happened at that time. Somebody was hung on the cross, on Cal Calvary cross. I believe so. Somebody was hanged, but that's not Jesus. Because if it was Jesus, he would become a false prophet. The moment he was hung on the cross, he would become a false prophet. Why? Because of the book of Genesis 21 verse 23. It says, if any man commit a crime and you hang him on a tree, you have to bury him that same day because whosoever is hung on a tree is a curse from God Almighty. So how could he be on the street? If he's on the street, he's a curse. That means he's a liar. He's an imposter. So he's not. But the book of Ro the, 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 the book of uh, Hebrew, chapter 5, verse 7. Look at what it says. Your answer is here. Hebrew 5, 7. It reads, Who in the days of his flesh, talking about Jesus, when he was flesh and bone, walking. Who in the days of his flesh, walking down on the street, he prayed to God Almighty to save him from death by crying and supplication and the Lord heard his prayers so God, God heard his prayers who in the days of his flesh he offered up praying and supplication and crying and tears to the only one God who will save him from death and he was heard heard from what? from that prayer so he didn't die it's a topic by itself I need about 1 hour 40 minutes to expound on crucifixion Inshallah, maybe we'll do our next program. I'll go into detail. Inshallah. Yeah. Now, I have a suggestion to make. Mm -hmm. This is uh, for our children because they are very vulnerable. We have survived this country. You know, there is a siege. There is some kind of attempt to indoctrinate our children in the schools, public schools, and everywhere. And I believe that your mission could be advanced by, I mean, uh, tailor made before. Uh, session with children. Yes. Especially you know, in this time. This is the time that we need to Absolutely. Uh, I'm looking forward. I'm so looking forward. That's what I suggest because I see that the way you are coming out you are forced to recommend. So I I suggest that 
Okay, uh, Inshallah. Give me street toys. But it's very unfortunate. It's only here that I don't do. This thing that you're saying, that's what I do all over the world. I get, I get, they invite me all over the world and they bring their children and I stay and do like a crash, crash course. I give them a certificate once they're done. Many countries. I was in Liberia. Stayed there for eight days. I did a program. I deal with the kids. The same thing, like a shop. I teach them little things that they, they take notes. And once they're done, I did a certificate. And they invite me here. That's what I do. But we always talk about we're going to do what we don't do. It's very painful that my community is not benefiting from me even. What life? Well, you call go to Atlanta. That's what I do. They invite me, Sheikh. How many days? Okay, four or five days. Whatever day we sit down. Okay, Sheikh. Four days. We do the program. I do crash program. That's what I do. From there, I was a different city. That's what I do. But only in New York, somehow, I don't know. We mentioned that, but nobody takes that stand or take that initiation to do. I'm available. Definitely, this is my community. I would like so much to do with. If you could organize them for me, I'm here. I would definitely, I'm here. I told Amir. Amir is on you. <laughs> we'll mention that many times. Inshallah. So, Inshallah, we'll do that. Sir, um, I have a question about. Uh, Sarah and uh, Hagar. Yes. They say he allowed his husband to have uh, his uh, medicine. And, yes. And then later on, they say when uh, Sarah gave birth, uh, Hagar gave birth, he was jealous and uh, like they were not, they were not like them. Is it, how, can, can you explain that? Yeah, it's in the book of Genesis. Okay. That's what happened. Because when Hagar, uh, when Hagar was given to Sarah to be the, her handmaid by some king in Egypt. Because he look at the story of uh, Abraham and Sarah, no issue. Abraham is almost like 85 or, or 90 years old, no issue. Sarah is like 80 years old, no issue. So he's just sorry for them. So he gave them that handmaid. Oh, okay, take this. You know, maybe she will help you. So that you see her, you feel like you have you know, somebody. So that's what happened. Beautiful princess. So she came and she was with Sarah as a handmaid. She was thinking of the house. So one day, Abraham was in prayer. This is the book of Genesis. I'm just making it short for you. So Abraham was in prayer. So Sarah, she looked at his husband. He's looking for a son. She knows that. So she came to him in the book of Genesis. She said, oh my Lord, why don't you take this handmaid of mine and marry her? The word used was marry her. Not girlfriend her. Why don't you take my handmaid and marry her? Maybe the Lord will find grace on earth, will give us a son through her. Maybe. So Abraham said, with your agreement, I agree. Abraham agreed. So if Abraham agreed, of course, he would pay, they would do whatever they do at that time to show that that's his wife. So he took it as a wife. And Abraham, within a year, she was pregnant. She had a baby boy. And Allah sent the angel to name the son Ishmael. God have heard your prayers. Ishmael in Takallam. I hear when you speak. Ishmael in Hebrew is hear. El is God. Ishmael. Allah have heard your prayers. So name the son. That showed the illegitimacy of Ishmael. The name was given from heaven. Six people were given name from heaven in the Bible. Ishmael is part of them. But you see, women are women. Abraham would go to Hagar. Hey, Hagar. He would take the baby, play with her, and Hagar would come. You know, that pain. It's just natural. So one day the Bible says she came up. She said, I wouldn't let, uh, I'm not going to let this, 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 uh, this born woman with her child to inherit my house. Why would she say that? You are the one that gives the go ahead in the first place. So why would you? So she's jealous. So when Abraham leave, she will come and give her the trouble. So she will go out in the desert. Abraham will come, he will bring her. It's a big problem. So Allah said, Look, arise and take her. I'll show you where you're going to be there. So Abraham went. He took Sarah, I mean Hagar, with the baby Ishmael to the place. It's very close to Islamic story. Very, very close. But, uh, you know, so that's where they dwell. They dwell in the place. Right. And eventually it became a city. It became a city. It became a city. It's a big, it's a long story. But that, that's what the Bible says happened. Is it true that he had hated? Is it true that, 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 that Sarah, Sarah hates yeah. whatever Hagar and Ishmael is doing? Of course, too. that's the Bible says. So, <laughs> you know, so that's why Jesus said, the stone that you rejected, the whole Israel rejected Hagar. They rejected Hagar. 
uh, last year, those whom you rejected upon her will be the kingdom of God we build upon her. Whether, she, whether it's a jealous or not, I cannot find out. But I know the Bible said that she hates her. You know, inshallah. And I have my DVDs also. Those of you who want to have some of my DVDs is out there. Um, once I'm done, you could get that uh, give it to your friends. Like I always say, you have so many Christian friends. Do the hour, get it and give it to them. And take it to those those who work, give it to your friends. That is also part of the hour. So you help the ministry and you have you, uh, you have the program that we do. Because we travel a lot and that will uh, help you also. Or take it home, your children, let them see. Let them see the challenges. I make some debate and this and that and lectures. Sometimes the lecture is more than the debate. Because in the lecture, I have time to give information that your children, they will take it. And their, their mind is very soft. They can easily put it in their fire. So let them read, let, let them listen to it. That will help them a lot, inshallah. So after the salat, it's going to be. One minute left. Okay, one minute left. This one guy minute. wants to know if we believe in Jesus. I say yes. Yeah. Now he said, why we don't believe that he's a son or whatever, whatever. So, well, because he didn't say he's, he didn't say he's a preeminent son of God. He didn't say that. If he had said that, we would have said, okay, fine, that would be a different story. But Jesus never said, I am God or I'm the son of God in the literal sense. That God has so many sons. Not, he's not the only one. Like in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 4, verse 22, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. You see, Israel is Jacob, the son of God also. In the book of uh, 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 Exodus chapter 7, verse 20, it says... Uh, uh, Moses is God also so why don't they worship Moses as God because the Lord said Moses I have made you a God unto Pharaoh I have made you a God he is the God you know so many quotations sons of God, son of God, son of God in Hebrew means a righteous person not physical son of God because God has no son inshallah. again different topic but like we could deal with that as time goes on inshallah inshallah I know why you're saying this. Uh, I have a many Christian uh, yeah. friends. Right. So when we're talking, you know, like when I say something about the teachers from the Quran, mm. so they, you feel like this guy is, like, what are you saying? He's going to him. Mm. So that's, you know. That's why I'm asking you because yeah. the more you talk to them, you feel like you want to know. Yeah, because he's feeling like it's true. You feel like you're close to him. Yeah. More than even the Jews, you know? Yeah. So they kind of like, like, they kind of like, they want to listen to That's him. what the Quran said. وَلَتَجِدَنَّ أَكْرَبَهُمْ مَوَدَّ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ كَانُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ كِسِّيْسِينَ وَرُحُبَانًا وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ The nearest in law to you, Muslims, are those who call themselves the Christians. The nearest in law, and it's true. You can't sit down and have a dialogue with a Jew. They hate us so much. There's a Jew and then the unbelievers. But the nearest in law are the Christian. The Christian, they don't read. If you go out of your way to read the Bible from your own, you have gone against the Holy Spirit. The pastor has to say, read this, read that, read this, read that. It's, a, it's like a cherry picking. They can't read like we go, you get the Quran, you read. No, 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 no. If they have that chance to read like we read, wallahi, they, will, they might find the truth. So they, they, they cherry picking. Okay, let's put, let's put, let's read this, read that, read, Lord, Jesus, Lord, this, that, that's it. If they read through, they will see all the spots. So they, put, they blind them, inshallah. That's it. And they believe Jesus will come back? Yes, they believe Jesus will come back. They believe he will come back. Me, what I tell them, can I finish this one? So they believe they believe you will come back. We also believe he's going to come back. But there's no authentic Quranic quotation that says Jesus is coming back. The Quran, the near Quran said is Jesus Christ and his mother will be the sign of the day of Kiyama. But there are so many hadith, authentic hadith that prove that Jesus Christ is coming. But me, I'm not waiting for Jesus. I'm not speaking for you. Me personally, I am not waiting for him. What's he going to do to me? I'm doing five prayers. Is he going to change it to make it four or six? No. The time of Hajj that I go, can he change it? He can't do anything. What I'm, he's coming to join me. So whether he come or he didn't come to me is immaterial. But when he comes, he's coming to do some work. Which work? 
That word is to be found in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Jesus said, on that day, many will, which day? The, my second coming. Many will come to me saying, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? In your name we cast out devil. In your name we do so many mighty miracles. Then Jesus said, then I will tell them, get away from me. I don't know you, you evil doers. The Jewish, no. The Hindu, no. The Muslim, no. The Christian, who is worshiping them and doing this miracle? Many will come to me saying, did we not prophesy in your, in your name, oh Jesus? In your name we cast out devil. In your name we do so many mighty miracles. Then Jesus said, get away from me. I don't know you, you who worship me for nothing. In the Scofield Bible, those who worship me for nothing. In the King James Version, those who worship me iniquity. In the Armenian Version, those who worship me for nothing. The same thing used. So you see, so he's coming to do a job. That job is to tell them, look, you worship me for nothing. <coughs> So he's not coming to do, he's coming to join us <laughs> and we continue, inshallah. Yeah, so sir, what you say is true because I have a friend, a Christian, he always talk about that. I say even if Jesus is going to come back, the Christians are going to run away from him. He's going to come as a Muslim and you want to see him as a terrorist and you're going to run away. Because Jesus will not come with, he's going to come with maybe a beer like that, they're going to call him terrorists and run away. Yes, okay, um, let me just throw it before we finish. The Trinity. The Trinity is not in the Bible, but the Trinity is in the Quran. You see that twist? Trinity is nowhere to be found in the Bible, not even mentioned once, but Trinity is in the Quran. <laughs> so, Trinity is in the Quran, but there's nowhere in the Bible where Trinity is mentioned. The only verse that speaks something closer to the Trinity is First John the five verse seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. But guess what? This quotation is no more in the latest Bible. They've taken it out as an what interpolation. It doesn't belong to the original text. Original text three. Codes Alexandros, Vaticanos. Synaticus. You don't find this quotation in these books. That means it was interpolated. It came later. So later they realized that it was a pagan by the name Philo. Philo was writing an apology in respect to the gods of the Greek. So he was praising the god of the Greek and he used those phrases. And then eventually it crept into the text. So it is not there. But in the original books it's not there. Christ never mentioned Trinity. Not even once. So first John chapter 5 and 3, that's what they use. Christ never said to him. In the book of John chapter 14, verse 28, Jesus said, My father is greater than I. My father is greater than all. If you believe in me, it is not me that you believe, it's the father, it's the father that you believe. I, by the power of God, cast out the devil. Book of John 17, 3, the same thing. This is life eternal. The only one true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou have sent. It's like to say, La ilaha illallah, Isa Rasulullah. He said, this is, there is but only one God and Jesus Christ whom thou have sent. John 73. So there's nothing that Jesus mentioned that looks like Trinity at all. Not mentioned at all. But Paul, Paul, who never saw Jesus, who came long after Jesus Christ left the earth, he said he is the 13 disciple of Jesus Christ. So he read Corinthians, Ephesians, Thessalonians, First John, Second John, Timothy, and he begins to write all this book. And in that book, in 1 Corinthians 7 verse, 7 verse 12, Paul said, I am speaking, not, not, not the Lord speaking. Again, 1 Corinthians 7 verse 25, Paul said, concerning the women and the unmarried, I did not receive any commandment from the Lord, but I'm giving my own opinion. In the book of God, opinion. So you see, it's, a, it's again, it's a topic. Who is Paul? So now we can give. We can, if you read the Old Testament that what Paul said and the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will be shocked. We call that vertical reading. You put what Paul said here and you put what Jesus said here and you read it into. Man, you will be like, what? What is Paul doing? He destroyed the whole religion. So this is Paul. But Trinity is a pagan ritual. It's a pagan, it's a pagan, neoplatonic pagan ritual that crept into you know, uh, uh, the cult of Jesus. It's not, it's not even mentioned at all, no.
Paul bring it on. Sure, last question. In sure. one of your uh, lectures, I think when you were in India, yeah. you did mention that like, uh, there's going to be a new Bible. I don't know if the Bible is out. No. That's what I've just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've moved it. 2051 is coming. But I don't know why. They, because uh, they were fighting still. They don't know how to bring it. They were trying to find a way to bring it to so that it would be safe. But they are afraid of what the backlash of the community. All of a sudden, what it says he referring to God now is going to be he stroke she. They want to push that agenda. So now they're having difficulties in uh, uh, presenting that Bible. But so far we've heard that the Bible is done. They wrote it, it's, it's ready, it's out there, it's going to meet the standard of the generation. But to bring it out is a big problem. They are surveying and seeing the outcry. How are they going to receive it? How is, you know, what is going to happen if they bring this? So they delay it. Hopefully, we just wait. If they bring it, we jump to it. And then we make commentary on it, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. Can uh, wrap up as the ulama are saying, policy will fill earth. Yeah. You've, <laughs> tried, like, you've traveled along the yeah. world. So what's yeah. word of encouragement, like some of the miraculous things that you've come across, yes. that's going to boost us yeah. to know that indeed the religion of Islam is the best religion. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil uh, Alameen. Sometimes, I, I, my travel is a, is a blessing from Allah. Sometimes I, I just go to some hotel in some country. I just pinch myself to make sure that it is me. You know, things that I've seen, things that I've, where I've been, I've never in my wildest dream ever think of it. But all is in the course of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And really I've seen a lot of things that uh, really convince me beyond, though I believe it even convinced me beyond, beyond reasonable doubt that Islam is the only religion. Islam is the religion of peace. Is the reason of truth is the reason that God has ordained. Now, if you take away Islam, look, are you going to be a Jew? What, what is in that Jew? Hi, if you take away Islam, are you going to be Christian? You're going to eat pork. I mean, you're going to you're going to pee without cleaning yourself. You're going to drink wine. And man, if you look at Islam by itself, you know the fact that we are called Muslims is a miracle by itself. We always say that the fact that we are called Muslims. That is the biggest miracle. Because every any other religion is called by the name of the one who brought the religion. Like Hinduism, Shintoism, Taoism, Jainism, Buddhism, whateverism, Christianism, or Christianity from Christ. Judaism from Jew. But the word Judaism is not even in the Bible. And the word Christianity is not even in the Bible. I mean, this is something that you, you, I, I don't know how they get, they get going. The word Judaism is not in the Old Testament. So how do they get it? Judah. Judah. Judah is the son of Yaqub alayhi salam. He's the second eldest son. Judah. So those who live outside Judaism, they call the people that came from Judah, from the children of Judah, are Judaism. Judaism. People name them that name. But Islam, we are not Mohammedans. Not Mohammedanism. We are Muslims. They tried to call us Mohammedans. They tried, but Allah didn't like it that we are Muslim. So the fact that we are called Muslim is the ultimate miracle by itself that Islam is indeed a true religion. Inshallah. Uh, definitely, I think I will reach the point that uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. So uh, I thank you very much for having me here. Thank you very much for uh, having the time to listen to me. May Allah make it easy for you. And definitely, we will give, uh, uh, give as much as you can for the masjid. Uh, this house doesn't have a father, it doesn't have a mother.